right after Thanksgiving, we talked about um, our radio sister, Alabama. Yes. Uh, your mother passed away on Thanksgiving. On Thanksgiving, yes. And we um, officially got the report back of how she passed away oh. because a lot of people have been asking, was your mom sick? Mm -hmm. She had been out here visiting yeah. in Seattle for two months. We had been hanging out. She's young. She's 55. And I struggled with whether or not I wanted to share this or not, but I think it's important, and well, I did want to share. Did you have your speculations before you had the report? Yes. Okay. We kind of figured that this would happen, and this is something that I've dreaded my entire life. Because my mom struggled with addiction. Whew. But we got the tox report back, and it was heroin and fentanyl overdose that killed my mom. Which is so crazy because it's something that you think, you know, you have an addict in your life, your whole life growing up, and you know this is a possibility mm -hmm. that they might pass away from yeah. an overdose. But when it happens, it still just hurts. But, you know, my family and I talked about this and I, because I thought that it's important to share my mom's story. Of course. Because she... Is still a human, regardless oh my God, yeah. of being an addict. And she still had a big heart, and she was still kind to people. She struggled with the problem. And it can kill people yeah. when you do this, and you don't even realize she didn't want to die. It wasn't that she no. did it on purpose. And it's the holidays. She went home. She had been in Alabama and not even four days from leaving Seattle visiting. And I know Thanksgiving is hard, and I guess that was the day she decided to go out and use, and that was her last time. How long have you known what happened? Before Christmas, we found out. We got her death certificate. What was your it on there. What was your first reaction when you actually saw it in writing? Um, I mean, there's a lot of emotions that comes yeah. with it. I'm. I'm sad for her. I wish I would have spoken to her about it more. I'm mad at her because she did this. And I feel like she just left me and my brothers and left me to deal with her death. Because that's what happens when your parent dies and they're not married. The kids have to deal with yeah. it. I had to handle everything. There's a lot. There is, uh, I, but I... There's so many. It's like I don't even know where to begin. It makes me think differently about addicts because I used to be so mean to her yeah. because of her drug abuse my whole life. Yeah. And then all of a sudden she died, and I felt like I took on all the hurt that she had because I know most people who use, it comes from a place of hurt. And I know my mom had a very hard life, and she used because she was hurt and she didn't know how to cope with it. And it makes me want to do more for other people that were in her situation. Yeah. Well, and like you said, she, like, it's not like she was a bad person. You said everyone has, like, this idea of what an addict is. But, like, yeah. your mom was here with you for two months yeah. having fun and laughing. And as far as I know, wasn't using drugs. Yeah. Uh, she was staying in your house. You would know that. Oh, yeah. And so it's so crazy to think that, just one moment, like one time, that yeah. could happen. And obviously talking about how your mother passed away and, and the overdose is not an easy thing to talk about, Alabama. And we already have people texting in at 41061. We love you, Alabama. Thank you for sharing your story. Thanks for sharing your story about your mom. Uh, much love. Many hugs, Alabama. We got Abby in Kirkland, Alex, uh, Alexandria in Tacoma. But I think the important thing, and the reason I think it's important to talk about tough things and personal yeah. things um, especially in this room that we have here, this little rinky-dink studio, is I think the thing that really hits home is what you said about your mom leaving you and your brothers because of her decisions. Um, and for any parent that is out there right now and might be struggling with the same demons your mom struggled with, Alabama... Yeah. I think that's an important thing to, to internalize. What, what am I doing with my choices and how is that going to affect the people Everybody. around me that I love? Because your mom loved you. Yeah. I mean, how long was she with you before? Oh, 
two months before yeah. she died, she was here. And even, my, you know, I feel bad for my grandmother, Mima, too, because she lost her daughter. Yeah. It affects everybody around around you mm-hmm. when it happens. But I also think, you know, everybody around an addict, I wish I would have shown my mom more love instead of judgment and being hateful towards her. But that's it. That's but, natural, and that, and yeah. that comes yeah. with it. Of course you're going to be annoyed and angry at someone doing that to themselves because it did have an effect on you and right. on your life and growing up. It's natural. And, of course, where any one of us can look back at anyone we've lost in our lives and say, I wish I did this. Yeah. yeah. But think about all of the amazing things you did with her. And it's it's easy to feel bad about the times that you were mad at your mom, Alabama. Yeah. But at the same time, those were real emotions that you felt at that time. And they yeah. were they were appropriate emotions because, like, I have a cousin who's uh, who's dealt with drugs for as long as I can remember, really. And he actually overdosed. And luckily, when he did, he happened to do it at home. And right. his mom heard him collapse. Right. And they were able to call an ambulance, and, and luckily he he made it. But... You want to you want to shake them and be like, just stop, right? Just freaking stop, Why and, can't and, and you? it doesn't click, and that's where the anger comes from. It's not because you hate the person, yeah. It's because you passionately frustrated want them to do better for themselves. Well, and that's the scary thing too. She was here for two months, and I know she wasn't using because there was no way for her to go right. find it, and she didn't bring any here with her. She knew I wouldn't have put up with it, but then she got home, and that was one of the first things she did, and that's how much. Even if you think that you're not going to use again or you've been clean for a while, it can sneak up on you, and you don't know if that's going to be the time that can kill you. We just got this text in. uh, 41061. Thank you for shedding light on addiction. I struggle every day watching my own mom slowly kill herself with addiction. And... I think the reason it's important, like I said earlier, to talk about this stuff is millions of people are going through the same thing, unfortunately, Alabama, that you went through. Yeah. Or that this person who texted, I don't want to read, they have their name, I don't want to read it out because yeah. I don't know if that's public yeah. info. Um, same thing they're going through. Yeah. And addiction as a whole is a problem that I don't know will ever be fully solved, but it needs to be attacked from so many different angles by so many different people and so many different organizations. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, And just seeing that text come through kind of puts a bow on it and lets you know, yeah, I mean, a lot of people are going through this and and the pain, even though there's real pain, um, you're not alone in it. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you for sharing. Yeah. And that was not easy. I don't know what to do, but I want to start being a part of the, the change and yeah. not a part of the problem.